Greetings and welcome to us all on this Sunday morning, the 5th of April. Kirana tato kato toi te roa maata o to tato atu ko Yesu Messia. Whakalofalahi atu kia mutorosi ke he ingoa he iki atau tolu ko Yesu Kiriso. Whakatalo whatu lepa ia man malu le au fia i le suafa o lo tato o li'i o Yesu Kiriso. In the name of our Lord and our Saviour Jesus Christ, I greet and welcome you all this morning. Today is Palm Sunday, a day in which we remember Jesus entering into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey. And Jesus went to Jerusalem to prepare for his death on the cross. Let us worship God. Behold, your King comes to you. He brings salvation. He brings peace. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. We praise your holy name, Lord God, as we gather to worship you. We thank you for uniting our hearts and minds to spend this time in prayer and in worship so that we may hear your holy word. Heavenly Father, bless our time of worship. Speak your holy words to us. Encourage and strengthen us with your Holy Spirit to face this day and the future with hope and with certainty knowing that you, Lord God, will help us in our times of challenges that we face. Bless our service from its beginning till the end. We pray this in and through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. Now, at this time of our service, we're going to have our Bible reading for today. And our Bible reading for today comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verse 1 to verse 11. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verse 1 to verse 11. I shall read these verses. Let us hear the word of God. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethage at the Mount of Olives. There Jesus sent two of his disciples on ahead with these instructions, Go to the village there ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied up with her colt beside her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone asks, if, if anyone says anything, tell him, the master needs them, and then he will let them go at once. This happened in order to make what the prophet had said come true. Tell the city of Zion, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did what Jesus had told them to do. They brought the donkey and the colt, threw their cloaks over them, and Jesus got on. A large crowd of people spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds walking in front of Jesus and those walking behind began to shout, Praise to David's son! God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was thrown into an uproar. Who is he? The people asked. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The crowds answered. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word. And to God's name be all glory and all praise 
now and forevermore. Amen. Now at this time of our service, we're going to have our time of prayer in which we give to God our prayers of thanksgiving, our prayers of confession, as well as our prayer of intercession. So during this time that we are all in lockdown and that we are now tuned in to our service, let us uh, unite our hearts and our minds as we bring before God our prayers. <coughs> let us pray. Great and mighty are your works, Lord God, for you are the God of grace and mercy. We give you thanks and praise, Heavenly Father, for this Palm Sunday, a day that your Son, Jesus Christ, showed his obedience and commitment to you by going to Jerusalem to face his death on the cross. We thank you, Lord God, for the power of your Holy Spirit. This renews us daily. And it helps us to live life in your grace and in your mercy. We thank you, Lord God, because you comfort our hearts with your holy presence. You give to us the warmth of worship and the fellowship that we have with each other on this day. We thank you, Lord God, for blessing us in the week that has ended. In all the challenges that we have faced, having to come, having to become used to living in lockdown and in this state of emergency. But Lord God, we thank you because we know that you are with us, directing our lives, lifting our hearts up when frustrations and worries come to us. We thank you, Lord God, for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, your only Son. It is because of his death and resurrection that we have been forgiven of our sins and being given the promise of salvation. Protect us, Lord God. Protect the elderly and the little children and the vulnerable. We pray for your blessings to be upon all families and all people, Lord God. We acknowledge at this time, Lord God, that we are a sinful people. There are many things that we have done wrong. We confess them before you now, Lord God. And we do so believing in the power of your forgiveness. That your forgiveness will come upon each and every one of us. Renew and strengthen us all. That we may continue to serve you, Lord God. We pray for your blessing upon the suburb of Mangere, Upon the city of Auckland. Upon our country of New Zealand. The world that we live in, Lord God, help us to, to know how to live our lives in this new way of being in lockdown as well as of being in a state of emergency, Lord God. We remember in our prayers this morning, Lord God, all those who are sick, those who are ill, those who are sick from the COVID-19 virus, those who are self-isolating and who are in quarantine at this time. Bless them all, Lord God. Grant to them the spirit of healing, but also the spirit of patience and hope. Remember also in our prayers, Lord God, all those who are bedridden, those who are elderly, those who are in rest homes. Heavenly Father, through your Holy Spirit, may they know and feel the comforting presence and your strength from the Holy Spirit. We pray at this time, Lord God, for all those who mourn and who grieve, those who have lost loved ones. We pray for your comfort and for your strength to come upon them. Heavenly Father, we pray that you grant to all families during their time of grief, their time of mourning, your comfort, your peace, your grace and your mercy. We pray for our world at this time, Lord God. Pray for the work of all health agencies, the World Health Organization. Grant to all countries, Lord God, your wisdom and your knowledge as they deal with this virus. We pray, Lord God, for peace and for justice to come upon countries who are in the midst of 
conflicts and violence and wars. Grant to them your peace, Lord God, at this time. We pray, Lord God, for relatives and for families and those we know of who live in other parts of New Zealand or in other parts of the world. Heavenly Father, during these uncertain times, we pray for your protection, for your peace to come upon them. Remind us, Lord God, that we are connected with them through the power of prayer. This morning in our service, Lord God, we will hear your word and we pray that your Holy Spirit will bless this word and bless the service, that it may be like a seed planted in our hearts, that it may grow and flourish. Heavenly Father, these are the prayers of our hearts together with our own silent prayers that we bring before you. In and through the name of your Son, our Lord and our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who taught us when to pray by saying together, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. At this time of our service, we will now have the sermon. A sermon in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Today is Palm Sunday. And as we would normally expect, we would see the children and the young people of the Sunday School and Bible class entering into the church, waving uh, palm leaves and singing. But as we know, uh, our church is now closed and we are doing our services online. But we can still learn a lot from this lesson as we've read from our Bible reading this morning. The theme of the sermon for this morning on this Palm Sunday is this. Our Lord Jesus Christ meets our deepest needs, not our incorrect expectations. Our Lord Jesus Christ meets our deepest needs, not our incorrect expectations. In New Wayan, Koihau Mautolu a Matua ko Yesu Kiriso, Kia Talia Mai ha Mautolu a Tau Manako Uho, Kaina Kai Koi Tau Mena Fakaseama. In Cook Island, Totato Atu ko Yesu Messia, Kua Akoro Ayae. Ke ara vei aia i tō tātou au ano ano tikatikai e auraka i te tāpapaanga i te au mea tāravake. And in Samoan, o lō tātou oli o Yesu e whetawi ma talawhea ngai ma o tātou mana onga ai le o o o o tātou manatu sese. Our Lord Jesus Christ meets our deepest needs, not our incorrect expectations. God gives us the wisdom to know what is important for us to do at this time. But God also gives us the wisdom to know what is not important and what is not a priority. This is an important point, and I'd like to do my best to say this point in uh, our island languages. That is the point that I've just said. God gives us the wisdom to know what is important to do and what is not important to do. In Cook Island, it would be like this. Ko oronga maitea tua kia tato i te pakari. Kia kite e e aa te mea pōpinga Ia tato ki rave, e ea te mea te kore, e tau ia tato ki rave. 
nyuwen ko ya tu na e ki fuaki mai e pulotu mo e lotu matala ke lo e tau mena uho ko aonga kia moto ke tau se mo e tau mena ko na kai tonu mai mo and in Samoan, the Fua Imaele Tua, Lona Tamai. Tato te loai le mea taua et tauna fai, male mea e le taua. God gives us the wisdom to know what is important to do and what is not important to do. The text for the sermon comes from Matthew chapter 21. And verse 9 are these words. Praise to David's son. God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God. Hosanna ita te maiti a tabita. Ki ora aia ko te aire mai ma te ingoa o Jehova. Hosanna ita rangi teite. Hosanna ke he tama a tabita. Ki a monuina aia Kua haele mai ke he ngoa he iki, ho sana ke he tau mena i lunga muatua. O sana i le aloa tāvita, i a manuia le a fio mai le suafo le li'i, o sana i mea i au pito i lunga. Jesus entered Jerusalem riding on a donkey, and there were many people there to greet him and to honour him. And these people, including some of Jesus' own disciples, were all expecting different things from Jesus. The crowds were expecting to see a mighty king. The disciples were expecting Jesus to be like their warrior leader. Judas was expecting to get some money for betraying Jesus. Mary Magdalene wanted Jesus' forgiveness and his peace. So there were these expectations from people on this day, Palm Sunday, and they were different expectations. Palm Sunday is a special day in the life of the Christian church. And we often think as, of Palm Sunday as a day when Jesus was greeted as a king. He rode into Jerusalem and the people greeted him and they honoured him. But in the story as told in the four Gospels, it tells the story of how the people shouted Hosanna and how they had great expectations of Jesus. They were expecting to see a warrior. They were expecting to see Jesus come into Jerusalem and drive out the Romans who were, who were in control of Jerusalem at that time. And so they shouted Hosanna because they thought this was what Jesus was going to do. But as we know, in a few days' time, they wouldn't be shouting Hosanna anymore. They would be shouting, crucify him. Crucify him. Why? Because their expectations of Jesus was wrong. The stories from the Gospels tells how the crowd who shouted Hosanna at Jesus at the beginning of the week changed their shouts to crucify Jesus before the end of the week and we know that and we'll read about that on our in our good friday service this coming week we know that sometimes our expectations can be wrong and sometimes our expectations can be too high they can be unrealistic and they can be completely incorrect the crowd's expectations of jesus was wrong they praised and greeted Jesus at the beginning of the week. By the end of the week, they wanted to crucify him. The disciples, Jesus' disciples, they followed Jesus at the beginning of the week. By the end of the week, they had abandoned him. They ran away. They were afraid. One of them even denied that he even knew Jesus. In this story of Palm Sunday, this is the only time in which we see Jesus putting himself above people. But he does this in a different way. <clears throat> Jesus, 
Jesus rides into Jerusalem not on a war horse or on a chariot, but he rides into Jerusalem on a donkey. A donkey. Why? Because Jesus is trying to promote peace and unity amongst the people. Jesus doesn't ride a war horse or a chariot which would have sent the message that he's here to bring war. Jesus wanted to, the people to understand his riding into Jerusalem on a donkey was to show that he was bringing peace and unity to people. He was trying to encourage people to care for one another and to love one another. The problem was the people didn't understand his message. And so even though Jesus rode into Jerusalem riding on a donkey, yet the people didn't understand. They still waved their branches. They only knew one thing. Jesus was going to come and save them from the Romans. He was going to be like a military warrior. Now the waving of branches has a military meaning. You see, two centuries before Jesus entered into Jerusalem, Jerusalem had been overtaken by a group of pagans. But there were a group of Jewish people called the Maccabeans. They retook Jerusalem back from those pagans. So the waving of these palm leaves symbolized a reminder of what happened back then. Happened two centuries before, when Jerusalem was retaken back. Retaken back for the Jews. So when Jesus entered into Jerusalem on that day, the day that we call Palm Sunday, the people waved their branches. They laid their branches down for Jesus. And they did this to show that they were expecting that Jesus had come back to take Jerusalem back for them to get rid of the Romans. This is what many of the crowd were expecting from Jesus. But the problem was, they weren't paying attention to the kind of animal that he was riding on. Like I said, he wasn't riding on a war horse or on a chariot. He was riding on a donkey. Now, when Jesus came into Jerusalem, it was the time of the Passover. And during the Passover, the population in the town of Jerusalem greatly increased. And so the leaders of the town would have begun to get worried because, you know, the water supply, the infrastructure of the town, the accommodation in the town, the supplies of the food in the town, all those things would have been, would have been stretched. And they may not be able to cater for the people because they were coming for the Passover. But to make even things to make things even more worrying for these leaders was when Jesus came into Jerusalem, adding more pressure on all these things, because now the crowds were even bigger. The crowd of people, the disciples, they all had the wrong expectations of what Jesus, of why Jesus came into Jerusalem. One week later, everything changed. The people shouted, in one week, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, that's what they shouted today. And then later they shouted, crucify him. Because the high expectations that they had of Jesus was now shattered. You know, when your expectations are wrong, and when uh, sometimes your expectations become shattered, when your hopes and dreams don't happen the way you expected them to happen, then sometimes we become negative in our thoughts. That's why... By the end of the week, the people who shouted Hosanna were shouting crucify him. Today is Palm Sunday. It's an important Sunday in the life of the Christian church. And even though we can't physically be worshipping in our church building as we would normally do, even though we can't see one another physically, but we can still worship God we can still be united together as a body of Christ, worshipping God through this platform. 
we can listen to the Palm Sunday story again and we can hear the words from God and we can try and understand what it means for us where we are. And as we listen to the words of Jesus, may we be reminded of the challenge that Jesus gives to us when he says, if anyone comes after me, let them take their own cross and follow me. As we listen to the story from Palm Sunday today, and also as we follow what happens to Jesus throughout this Holy Week coming up, it will describe the time that Jesus was arrested, his trial, his sufferings that he went through. All these stories are recorded in our Gospel writers. And it all shows, interestingly, it shows that it wasn't the men, it wasn't the male followers of Jesus who understood Jesus' message, no. It was the woman, the female followers of Jesus, the two Marys, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Mary Magdalene, who followed Jesus right to the tomb. They never ran away. It was them who talked and saw the risen Christ. This week, as we lead up to Good Friday and Easter Sunday, is called Holy Week. And as we approach this uh, Holy Week, we relive in our hearts and in our minds the suffering and the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are reminded during this time of Easter as we come closer to Holy Week, as well as to Resurrection Sunday and Good Friday, we are reminded of how great God's love was for us. God wanted to give us peace. He wanted to show us peace. He wanted to bring calm to us. He wants unity and harmony for people. The crowd waved their palm leaves to Jesus because they wanted a military leader. They wanted a warrior. And so today they would cheer for Jesus. Yet one week later they would crucify him. Likewise, Peter and the disciples, they wanted something similar. Likewise, Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot, he wanted the money. Mary Magdalene wanted to ask Jesus for his forgiveness, and she was seeking peace from him. Because Mary Magdalene knew she was a sinner, yet she was humble, and she confessed her sins before Christ. And she followed him all the way to the cross. People of God, our worship to God continues, even though we are not physically gathering together in a church. Yet we can worship God in your bubbles, in your families. As we prepare to celebrate the Holy Communion this morning, and as we enter this last week, the Holy Week of Christ's suffering, we relive in our minds and in our hearts all that he went through. He went through it for us. He went through it to save us. And even those, even though this is, these are difficult and uncertain times for us, and there is anxiety and there is worry, yet in the midst of all that, we are reminded that Jesus focused on his task. Jesus remained calm. He was steadfast. He knew what was expected of him. So therefore, this is the example we follow from Jesus. Even though we are in uncertain times, even though it's unsettling what is happening to us, be focused. Remain calm. Follow the rules of isolation. Be, be steadfast in what you do. You know, there is all our essential shops are still open. Supermarkets, service station, pharmacies, doctors, they're still open. There's no need to do any panic buying. Be a good parent. Know what is expected of you. Show patience. And show good leadership in your family. If you're a young person, do your best to know it's not about you anymore, but it's about the family. 
There is, I've mentioned this in my devotion throughout the week, there is no I in the word team. You are a team. You are all in this together. People of God, let's have the right expectations this Easter as we prepare for the death and resurrection of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. At this time of our service, we're now going to prepare ourselves for the Holy Communion. And I'd like us to now, as I've asked you throughout the week, to have your bread, your piece of bread, and your glass of water or juice or something. <coughs> if you have put that um, near you, I'd like you to now make sure that that is close to where you are for our communion service. This is the first time we've done communion service online. And so we're all learning how to do this online. So uh, we pray that God gives us that patience, that if uh, we make mistakes, it's not about the mistakes. It's about our worship and our hearts to the Lord God. Right. At this time, friends, God prepares us for a feast. A feast for you, a feast for all people. A feast of good things, a feast of peace. Come and taste, eat and be filled. Drink deep and never thirst. Come to the feast that God prepares. And may we be the loaves shaped by the hands of God. May we be as the wine of the Spirit poured out that others may know joy. May the love of Christ be the yeast, the flavour of thought, word and deed. This time we shall listen to the words of the institution in our different island languages. Firstly, in the Cook Island language. Iroka o ki iaku i te atu, tāku i tuku katoa atu ki a koutou nai. Ko rabe te atua rā ko Iesu, ko rabe te atu rā ko Iesu te manga i te pō. I piki kā aia mai ei ai āra. E o tia kera i aia i te akameitaki, vā vā i ora nā ko atura. Kā rabe mai, kā kai. Ko tāku kōpapa te ia i ati ati ia nō koutou nei. E pera koutou e manakoanga ki ako. E kua pera koutou oki te kapu, ki oti ake tāna kaianga nā ko atura. Te ia nei kapu, ko te kore romotu ou ia i tōku nei toto, e pera katoa koutou. Kia inu e manakoanga i ako. Kua kai anake koutou i te ia nei manga, e kua inu i te ia nei kapu. Kua kakite ia koutou i te matenga o te atu. E tai ua mai ai āra. In our Nguyen language. Kua au foki ne maua e au mai he iki e mena, Kua tuku atu e au ki a mutolu, ko e pō ia ni ne āwho ai e iki ko Iesu, ne te toa ai e ia e āretu. Kua whakaue, si toki tofi ai, mō e pehe ange, ki a toa si kai. Ko e hā kua sino hane, kua hofi hofi mō luku toto mā mutolu, ki a eke mutolu e mena nei, Mō e whakamanatuanga kia. Si pihe foki e kāpi niu, ko osi e kai mena, kua pehe ange. Ko e kāpi niu nei, ko e mawhe anga fou ia, ke e hā koto, ki a eke mutolu e mena nei, mō e whakamanatuanga kia.
ke he tau a hoosi, ko e inu ai e mutoru. A koe tau a hoosi, kua kai ai e mutoru e a reto nei, mo e inu e kāpiniu nei, kua whakailoa atu ai e mutoru e mātu lei he iki, ato haele mai ai ia. Fa whonga mai upu e fa tungunga le taisuanga, a lo tanto o libro de Jesus, e pe ona maua mai ai le apostoa paua. O a ufoi na o maua mai le li ila mea na o tu i nga tu ai a te o tau. Tu le la pa po na fa alata ai le li o Jesus Christo, na i a tango ai le areto, o a i a faftai, o na tofi tofi ai lea ma fai atu. O lo tino le nei wa tofi tofi ma sui o o tau. I o tau fai le nei mea ma fa mantunga i a te au. Ua ia wha pewho i leipu, ina ua umaona ai, ua wha pe atu. O le nei ipu, o le ipu le nei, o le whenga inga faulea i lo toto. I au tau whaila nei mea, ma wha mantunga i a te au, i asu uma tau te whainu ai. O wā o asu uma tau te ai ai le nei aretu, ma whainu le nei ipu, tau te wha ai lo atu ai, le ma liu o Jesu ke riso. Se i a fiu mai o ia. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you. For the forgiveness of sins, whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the saving death of the Lord Jesus Christ until he comes. At this time now, I invite you to, to hold up your bread and your cup. As I offer a blessing that God may set these things apart for the use of our communion today. We pray, Lord God, that you will now set these elements apart, this bread and this wine, to be made holy, that they may become for us the elements of the Holy Communion, symbolizing the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our great Eucharistic prayer of thanksgiving. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise to him. Lord God, we praise you. We give you thanks for the opportunity to be renewed and refreshed. We thank you for the sacrament of Holy Communion, the forgiveness of sins, and the opportunity for all people to be renewed in mind and in spirit. We thank you, Lord God, for creating the whole world. We thank you for your promise to all your people and for the life we know in Jesus Christ, your Son. Born of Mary, he shares our life. Eating with sinners, he welcomes us. Leading his followers, he guides us. Dying on the cross, he rescues us. And risen from the dead, he gives new life. Therefore, with all the company of heaven and with all your people of all times and places, we proclaim your greatness and praises. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy Lord God, by what we do here in remembrance of Christ, we celebrate his perfect sacrifice on the cross and his glorious resurrection and ascension. We declare that he is Lord of all, and we prepare for his coming in his kingdom. We pray that through your Holy Spirit, this bread may be for us the body of Christ 
endless wine, the blood of Christ. Accept our sacrifice of praise, and as we eat and drink at his command, unite us to Christ as one body in him, and give us strength to serve you in the world. And to you, one holy and eternal God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we give praise and glory, now and forevermore. Amen. As this grain was once scattered in the fields and has come together in one bread, so we, with different needs and hopes, come together as one, for we share one bread. The cup which we share is the cup of the new covenant written in our hearts and witnessed by Jesus. The gifts of God for the people of God. All is now ready. I invite you now to, to hold your piece of bread. I will say the following words. And then we will eat together. Jesus said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You may now eat your bread and say a prayer. I invite you now to hold your glass. Jesus said, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. You may now drink and say a prayer. We continue in prayer. We thank you, Lord God, for the sacrament of Holy Communion and that we are joined together with the communion of saints. We thank you for all that it means to us in giving us new strength and giving us courage to face whatever challenges lie ahead of us. And we pray, Lord God, that you will continue to bless each and every one of us, Lord God, that we may know your peace and your strength and your grace and mercy at this time pray for your blessing upon us throughout the new week that lies ahead we pray this lord god and through the name of jesus christ our lord and our savior amen now just before our service concludes for this morning i'd like to give you some uh, announcements and it's important that we um we use this platform to be giving these announcements now and that way there will be some sort of certainty surrounding uh, things that we are used to and um, things that we need to know about. So the first announcement is this. All our language services, our New Wayan language service, our Samoan, our Cook Island language service, all of these will now be put on hold until we can resume our normal church service back in the church. Many of our lay preachers we're, we're on the roster to do many of our language services throughout these next few months. And many of them um, will find it quite challenging to have the resources to set up to do online services. Therefore, we will put all our language services on hold. The second announcement. Our combined morning service, which is what you are looking at now, what you are part of now, that will be our one main service every Sunday. 
In addition, every day there will be daily devotions from Monday through to Saturday. Those daily devotions will be accessed. You can access that through the Mangere PIBC Facebook page. If you don't know how to get it, you may have a young person living with you at home or someone who knows how to access it. Ask them. And if you're a young person listening to this, that's something you can do to be useful and helpful to your older members of your family who are there. There's one thing we can be sure of, even though we are living in uncertain times, but God's word, God's word is always available for us to feed us every day. Now, this Good Friday, or this Friday, is our Good Friday service. It will take place online, so please tune in. Uh, and the Good Friday service will take the place of the Friday devotion that will be posted. Now, next Sunday will be like this Sunday, today. It will be a communion service, as it will be Resurrection Sunday. So again, just like what you did today, please bring a piece of bread and a glass of water or juice or something and have it near you. So when it comes to the time of doing our communion, it will be right there. Again, I'll say all the words. The only thing you do is eat and drink when I give you the instruction to do so. Now, the last notice before I close our service this morning with the benediction. Remember to obey the lockdown rules. May God protect our essential workers and all those who are working from home as well as those who are working from their workplaces. We thank you once again for keeping New Zealand operating. Please keep our elderly safe and stay home. We're going to conclude our service in prayer. Let us pray. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. God bless and we'll see you again tomorrow.